The lungs are essential organs that perform the crucial task of respiration, enabling the exchange of gases that sustain life. Understanding how the lungs work involves exploring the intricate pathways and mechanisms that facilitate breathing and ensure efficient gas exchange, which is what we're going to cover in this simplified video, so keep watching if you want to learn more. When air enters the body, it typically does so through the nose or mouth. The nasal cavity warms, moistens, and filters the air, while the mouth provides an alternate pathway, especially during heavy breathing or physical exertion. From there, air passes through the pharynx and larynx, the latter housing the vocal cords, which allow for sound production. The air then travels down the trachea, or windpipe, or sturdy tube reinforced with cartilaginous rings to maintain its shape and keep the airway open. The trachea bifurcates into two primary bronchi, each leading to one lung. The right lung is slightly larger and divided into three lobes, while the left lung has two lobes, making space for the heart. Within the lungs, the primary bronchi continue to branch into smaller bronchi, and then into even smaller bronchioles, creating a complex network resembling an inverted tree. This extensive branching is crucial for distributing air evenly throughout the lungs. At the end of the bronchioles are the alveoli, tiny sac-like structures where gas exchange occurs. There are approximately 300 million alveoli in the human lungs, providing a vast surface area for efficient gas exchange. The alveoli are surrounded by a dense network of capillaries, tiny blood vessels that facilitate the exchange of gases between the lungs and the bloodstream. The walls of the alveoli and capillaries are extremely thin, allowing oxygen to pass from the alveoli into the blood and carbon dioxide to move from the blood into the alveoli. This process is driven by diffusion, where gases move from areas of higher concentration to areas of lower concentration. Breathing involves two main processes, inhalation and exhalation. During inhalation, the diaphragm, a dome-shaped muscle located at the base of the lungs, contracts and moves downwards, enlarging the thoracic cavity and creating negative pressure within the lungs. This pressure difference causes air to flow into the lungs. The intercostal muscles between the ribs also assist by lifting the rib cage, further expanding the chest cavity. Exhalation is primarily a passive process where the diaphragm and intercostal muscles relax, reducing the size of the thoracic cavity and increasing the pressure within the lungs, pushing air out. However, during vigorous activities or certain respiratory conditions, Exhalation can become an active process involving additional muscles to forcefully expel air. The regulation of breathing is controlled by the respiratory center in the brainstem, which continuously monitors the levels of carbon dioxide, oxygen, and pH in the blood. High levels of carbon dioxide or low levels of oxygen trigger the brainstem to increase the rate and depth of breathing, ensuring that more oxygen is brought into the body and more carbon dioxide is expelled. This feedback mechanism maintains homeostasis and ensures that the body's metabolic demands are met efficiently. In addition to gas exchange, the lungs have several defense mechanisms to protect against inhaled pathogens and particles. The airways are lined with cilia, tiny hair-like structures that move rhythmically to transport mucus and trapped particles out of the lungs. Goblet cells within the airway epithelium produce mucus, which captures dust, bacteria, and other foreign substances. This mucus is then moved towards the throat by the cilia, where it can be swallowed or expelled, keeping the airways clear. Moreover, the lungs contain immune cells such as macrophages that patrol the alveoli and airways, engulfing and digesting pathogens and debris. These defense mechanisms are crucial for maintaining lung health and preventing infections and other respiratory conditions. The process of gas exchange in the alveoli not only supplies oxygen to the body, but also removes carbon dioxide, a waste product of cellular metabolism. Oxygen from the inhaled air diffuses through the alveolar walls into the capillaries, where it binds to hemoglobin molecules within red blood cells. This oxygen-rich blood is then transported to the heart, which pumps it throughout the body, delivering oxygen to tissues and organs. Conversely, carbon dioxide produced by cells during metabolism is carried by the blood back to the lungs. It diffuses from the blood into the alveoli and is then expelled from the body during exhalation. This continuous exchange of gases is essential for maintaining the body's acid-base balance, ensuring that the blood remains within a narrow pH range necessary for proper physiological function. 
As previously mentioned, the alveoli where gas exchange takes place are surrounded by a network of elastic fibers that allow them to stretch and recoil with each breath. This elasticity is crucial for maintaining the structural integrity of the lungs and ensuring that air is efficiently moved in and out. The alveoli are coated with a thin layer of fluid containing surfactant, a substance produced by type 2 alveolar cells. Surfactant reduces surface tension within the alveoli, preventing them from collapsing and ensuring they remain open and ready for gas exchange. The importance of surfactant is particularly evident in premature infants, who may be born before their lungs have produced sufficient amounts of this substance. This can lead to respiratory distress syndrome, a condition where the alveoli collapse, making breathing difficult and reducing the efficiency of gas exchange. Surfactant replacement therapy has been a life-saving treatment for these infants, highlighting the critical role surfactant plays in lung function. The distribution of blood flow in the lungs is another aspect that ensures optimal gas exchange. The pulmonary circulation is a low-pressure system designed to accommodate the entire cardiac output. Deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle of the heart is pumped into the pulmonary arteries, which branch extensively within the lungs forming a dense network of capillaries around the alveoli. This arrangement allows for maximal contact between the alveolar air and the blood, facilitating efficient oxygen uptake and carbon dioxide removal. Moreover, the lungs have the remarkable ability to match ventilation and perfusion to optimize gas exchange. This process known as ventilation-perfusion coupling involves several mechanisms. For example, areas of the lungs that are well ventilated receive more blood flow, while poorly ventilated areas receive less. This ensures that blood is directed to regions of the lung where it can be most effectively oxygenated. Local factors such as oxygen levels in the alveoli and the smooth muscle tone of pulmonary arterioles play significant roles in regulating this coupling. The regulation of breathing involves a complex interplay between the respiratory center in the brainstem, chemoreceptors, and various sensory inputs. The respiratory center located in the medulla oblongata and pons generates rhythmic impulses that control the contraction of the diaphragm and intercostal muscles. Chemoreceptors in the carotid bodies and aortic bodies detect changes in blood levels of carbon dioxide, oxygen, and pH providing feedback to the respiratory center to adjust the rate and depth of breathing accordingly. For instance, an increase in carbon dioxide levels or a decrease in pH, indicating acidosis, stimulates the respiratory center to increase breathing rate and depth, enhancing the elimination of carbon dioxide and restoring normal pH levels. Conversely, a decrease in carbon dioxide levels or an increase in pH indicating alkalosis, results in slower, shallower breathing, allowing carbon dioxide levels to rise and pH to return to normal. This precise regulation ensures that the body's acid-base balance is maintained within a narrow range, which is crucial for the proper functioning of enzymes and other biochemical processes. The lungs also play a role in various non-respiratory functions. For example, they serve as a filter for blood trapping small clots and air bubbles that could otherwise cause harm if they reach the systemic circulation. The lungs are involved in the metabolism of certain substances, such as the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, by angiotensin converting enzyme on the surface of pulmonary capillary endothelial cells. Angiotensin 2 is a potent vasoconstrictor that helps regulate blood pressure and fluid balance. Additionally, the lungs contribute to thermoregulation by adjusting the temperature and humidity of the air we breathe. This is particularly important in maintaining homeostasis and ensuring that the body functions efficiently under varying environmental conditions. In terms of immune defense, the lungs are equipped with multiple layers of protection. The mucus provided by goblet cells traps inhaled particles and pathogens, which are then moved out of the airways by the coordinated action of cilia. This mucociliary escalator is a primary defense mechanism that keeps the airways clear of debris and microorganisms. Furthermore, the alveoli contain immune cells such as alveolar macrophages, which engulf and destroy bacteria, viruses, and other harmful agents. Inflammatory responses in the lungs are also finely tuned to protect against infection while minimizing damage to lung tissue. 
For example, during an infection, immune cells release cytokines and other signaling molecules that attract additional immune cells to the site of infection. These responses help to contain and eliminate pathogens. However, excessive or chronic inflammation can lead to tissue damage and contribute to respiratory diseases such as asthma, COPD, and pulmonary fibrosis. But as you can see, the lungs are extraordinary organs that play a pivotal role in sustaining life. Through a complex and efficient system of airways, alveoli, and blood vessels, they ensure the essential exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. This process is intricately regulated by the respiratory center in the brainstem, which continuously adjusts breathing patterns to meet the body's metabolic demands and maintain homeostasis. Understanding the multifaceted functions of the lungs underscores their critical importance in overall health and highlights the need for maintaining lung health through proper care and lifestyle choices. If you want to support the channel, please like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And there should be some other helpful videos popping up on your screen right about now that I think you will enjoy. And just a quick reminder, we are not doctors. This video is for informational purposes only. Thank you so much for watching, have a blessed day, and as always, breathe easy my friend.